Let's begin with the case. You have a 55-year-old male who presents with shortness of breath. Initial exam, you notice him wheezing bilaterally on his lower lung basis. His vital signs are about normal. So you start to think about your initial assessment plan. You may consider ordering some blood work, maybe get a chest x-ray, an EKG, and you think about your differential diagnosis. Perhaps he has pneumonia, a pulmonary embolus, acute coronary syndrome, heart failure, pericardial effusion, just to name a few. So here's your data. A quick look, and you can probably tell that there aren't any concerning abnormalities on his lab work. Here's his EKG. You notice he's in normal sinus rhythm, doesn't have any acute concerning changes. Here's his chest x-ray. No signs of pulmonary congestion, no infiltrates, no pleural effusions. Looks pretty normal. So what are you going to do now? You really quite don't have a good understanding of what his pathological process is yet. What if I could offer some additional information? What if you could actually assess his cardiac function at this point? Would that be helpful? Probably, right? So let's say, you know how to perform an echo, so you go ahead and do a point of care echo at the bedside. You find out that he's got some reduced left ventricular contractility, he's got normal chamber sizes, and he has no pericardial effusion. Putting this information together with your clinical assessment and evaluation, you'd probably be more concerned now that this is some sort of new cardiac injury causing a new onset congestive heart failure picture. So what is your focus question with a bedside ultrasound echo exam? Well, your focus question is very simple. There are three things you're going to assess for on your point of care echo. Contractility, pericardial effusion, and chamber sizes. When performing your point of care echo, you're going to obtain four basic views. A peristernal long axis view, a peristernal short axis view, an apical view, and a subxiphoid view. Now a question I get all the time is do I really need to perform all four views on every patient? The answer is yes. You always want to get multiple views to assess for your data points. This will confirm or rule out your findings. Also, some views are better than others for assessing one or more of your data points. So always attempt all four views on all your patients. Now I have to bring this up. There is some marker controversy. Where should the dot go on the screen? You're probably used to seeing cardiology echoes where they will traditionally place the indicator to the right of the screen. However, because point of care ultrasound is not just echoes, but extends to other organ systems, which traditionally have the indicator to the left of the screen, when we do our echoes, we continue to keep the indicator to the left of the screen. But to accommodate for that, we will rotate our probe indicator 180 degrees to obtain our images. This will produce the same image orientation on your screen as our cardiology colleagues. So we all keep it very consistent. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited Point of Care Ultrasound Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.